can arrest this church tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. Because we are here to be burning and shining lights in this city. I say no more than darkness can arrest this church. This church is full of light tonight. If you have a need, you can have it filled. If you have a desire, it can be met. If you came here one way, you can leave another way. Because the work of the church is to convert, to change through Christ, not through churchism, not, not through ecclesiastical maneuvering, not, not through uh, pageantry or pomp or ceremony or ritualism. None of that will help you anyway. Your heart is only changed by God. The only way your heart can change. Did you know that a human heart can never be changed by any other force than the force of Jesus Christ? Amen. Nobody can change. Somebody said, people change me and influence me. I doubt that. I doubt very seriously. People can influence you to a degree, but your will, your will will not let them do any more than your will will let them do. Uh, your personage, your spirit, your personality, because the Bible teaches that your body is soul and spirit. You're not just body, but your spirit and soul. You are triune. You are body, soul, and spirit. And no one, no one can change. Somebody said, but I can change their mind. I doubt that unless they assent to it, unless they consent to it. Uh, because there is nothing, nothing more powerful than a will or a mind that is set. It will not be changed unless Jesus Christ changes it. Now, the heart will never be changed unless Christ changes it because the heart is where Jesus comes in and that light is the light of men and that light shines. Where does that shine? Next verse. Next verse, in him was light. The light was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness. August the 19th, 1945, at 9.30 in the evening in Sarasota, Florida, uh, in, in Lonnie Fordham's house, in a prayer meeting, in a cell meeting, with some of the saints there, I knelt to pray in the kitchen. My cousin uh, back here, Christine, uh, was there. That, that, that's, uh, that's 1945. Uh, that's, that, that was August the 19th. 9.30. I was there. I can tell you the time. Yes. I can tell you the place where the grace of God reached me and I became a Christian and I was changed at 9.30 in the evening. The Holy Spirit threw me back on my... I was kneeling to pray and I fell backward away from that table, away from that chair and the Holy Ghost of the Holy Spirit came down upon me and this boy i was a boy i wasn't a man yet i was a boy i became a christian when i was a boy i was not a man but i was a young boy and the soul inside of me was wicked for a young man my spirit was not good i my life was not good i was going the wrong way on the one-way street and i was going toward trouble trouble, trouble. But in one moment, God changed my heart. And the light came in, and the darkness could not stop it, nor arrest it. You know, the most joyous moment you have is in, when Christ comes in your life. I hope tonight everybody's heart is changed in this place. I hope you really get out of yourself tonight. I really hope everybody here, come on, come on. Well, why would you come to church and go back home the same way? Do you desire an experience from God tonight? Did you come here for an experience, a relationship? A, praise the name of the Lord. There is no purpose in coming to church unless you come to be changed. There is no reason for you to attend a worship service unless, unless you intend to have a relationship with Christ that will let you leave there that night and go home a different way than you came. Otherwise, it's just a blank check. Did you know that's a blank check? You know what that is when a person comes and sits in a worship service and God does not affect their heart or their spirit, God does not change them, 
God does not help them because of their will or their feelings. It's a blank check. You came with a blank check, you go home with a blank check. There's nothing filled out. There's no sum made out. There's no gift made. But when Christ comes in, praise the name of the Lord, the light comes in. And you can feel, oh, I feel my soul. I feel my heart. Praise the name of the Lord. I am feeling God all over me. I am changing. I am changing. I'm not the same. I'm going home a different way. I have been touched of God. The Master has illuminated me. I am going home a different way. Praise the name of the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not a blank check. You're not going home. I don't know. I don't know what all the Lord's going to write on my check tonight. But I'm going home a different way than I came. I'm going home full of the Word, full of the Spirit, full of joy, full of hope, full of vision, because I have walked in the light as He is in the light. And then when Christ came and He began to lead the church and bless the church and guide the church and help the church, oh, how big things come from little things. Uh, Jesus started with fishermen, then He went from fishermen uh, to uh, uh, tax collectors and he went from them uh, to some of the uh, Israelites uh, uh, that had no guile in them and, and he, he gathered the church and the church became the vehicle by which Christ demonstrated to the world that he wasn't by himself that he had affected somewhat that he had disciples and those disciples were just like him and if you go to the fifth chapter of Matthew, if you have your Bible, and, uh, and, and go there, and we have a little glimpse into uh, how Jesus affected, how he affected uh, the uh, disciples. And uh, in the fifth chapter, I want to believe that's where I want to go. Um, he said, but ye, I want to get the verse where he said, but ye are the light of the world. Uh, verse 14, is it? Um, of 5? Yes. Yes, in verse 14, chapter 5 of Matthew. He said, but you, well, let's go to verse 13. We have to take both of those. Uh, he uses salt first in verse 13. And he said, but you are the salt of the earth. You're the salt of the earth. But if the salt would lose its savor or its taste, wherewith shall it be salted? Its seasoning influence, the savor, the taste of salt. He said, uh, wherewith shall it be salted? In other words, you can't use salt that's lost its savor. There's nothing going to be salted with salt that loses its, its influence. Did you know a Christian that loses their influence and has only a name that I go to church? I'm a Christian, they can never influence anything. No. They have no influence no. over anything no light. because their light is not there. Yeah. Their knowledge is not there. Their testimony is not there. Their witness is not there. They're not the salt that has its savor. You can be salt, but you can lose your savor, yeah. your testimony. You can lose your testimony. Yeah. Uh, you can say, I'm salt, I'm a Christian. I go to church. I'm part of that church there. Uh, I, my name is on the church roll. Couldn't be here because we don't have a church roll. Mm -hmm. I, I can't put your name on a church roll. Uh, if your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, then you've got a problem because uh, I'm not going to write your name on a book saying you're a member of the Gospel Tabernacle. When you walk through that door, your name should be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I, I hope it is tonight. And if your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you better get busy and say, Lord, quickly, quickly do the work of a scribe and write my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Put my name there because I, I want my name there. 